Hi, many of you might know me as a soccer player, or as a runner. You might think you know me because you saw my name a few times on the Shady Side Twitter or Facebook. If that's you, then you might be surprised when I tell you that today I'm going to talk about how running and soccer both broke and saved me. But first, I'll share that my biggest fear is being in front of all of you right now and saying something that might negatively change the way you see me, or worse, change the way I see myself. My paralyzing fear of judgment is one of my biggest challenges, and running forced me to face this head on in a way that almost broke me. Hi, I'm Melissa Riggins, and this is my senior sage. I have always been very critical of myself, and because of this, I was always juggling between acting to please this judgmental version of myself and acting to please what I presume to be the judgmental version of others, and I was always losing because I'm not very good at juggling. <laughs> that has always been a struggle of mine. Despite the big wins and new records you may have heard about on social media, running became something that magnified this overly self-critical aspect of myself in ways that nearly crushed me. I would, for a long time, really until this past spring, I couldn't go for a jog in my neighborhood without feeling nervous. I would be nervous that I wouldn't run fast enough for my own standards. I would think that my neighbors would watch, and oh no, what, I have to, what if I have to stop and they see me? That's so embarrassing. I would be humiliated. What if I don't have my best run and someone sees? It became an all or nothing obsession. Not winning meant that I was a total failure, a fraud, a total loser. I built this mentality that if I didn't win every race I ran, I wasn't fast. If I didn't have a final push at the end to beat every single competitor, then I wasn't a true competitor. I felt that I was a fraud. I built an identity that revolved around running. I became nothing more than my mile split profile, my personal best, and my college commitment status. And because I built my identity on this, I questioned, what if I'm not fast? And following that, if I'm not fast, who am I? As you can imagine, I set myself up for intense failure. When perfection is the only option, you can only go so long before you're an utter failure to yourself. I applied my all or nothing self-critical mentality to nearly everything. With school, I was either smart or I wasn't. If I didn't understand the content immediately, then I was stupid. Oh my goodness, my fear of putting work up on the board was overwhelming. I felt the need, and sometimes still do, to preface it with the fact that everything might be wrong and I might be wasting everyone's time. I always assumed that I was the least intelligent person in the class, especially in math, and it doubted everything I did. I was afraid to ask a question because I thought if no one else asked it, then obviously I was the dumb one in the room. With running, the sense that perfection was the only option evoked a sense of unimaginable self-doubt and fear. Before a big race, I would tear myself down. I completely wrecked myself. I would look at the other girls' times and tell myself there's no way I could win, but I might be the most competitive person there is, and if you know me, then you know this. My head might say, I can't win, but at the same time, not winning was simply not an option. My head might... <sighs> The inner conflict I put myself through was torture. But here's the thing. I usually won my races. I'm a four-time state champion, and I hold the 800-meter state record. What more positive reinforcement could I possibly ask for? After I won two state titles my sophomore year, I remember being really happy and proud for a day or two, maybe even for the entire weekend following the meet. The problem was I never learned how to truly celebrate and understand the context of my victories in terms of how I perceive myself. Once I had another meet on my calendar, I forgot my entire racing history. The new meet became a date in the future that I just saw as another opportunity to fail. The summer after my sophomore year, I went and raced the mile event at the New Balance Nationals in Greensboro, North Carolina. I placed sixth. Sixth. I was a complete and utter failure. I lost. I failed. It didn't matter that I had two years of racing success behind me. It didn't matter what my personal best said. I lost the race. And because of this, I was a failure and a fraud. My best was not good enough. What do you do when your best isn't good enough? My entire being revolved around winning, and now who was I? When the race was over, as I was being sponged down with cold water, yes, I was that tired, I felt embarrassed and humiliated. All my work up to that point, my entire racing history, all of it was for nothing. A total waste of time and effort. Everything was for nothing. 
I felt so lonely. It was just me, my 16-year-old self, sitting at a track meet questioning my worth, future, and identity because what was on that clock was a mere five seconds different than what I wanted. I'm working on it, but I still have these moments where I become that girl who is embarrassed by placing sixth at a national race, the girl who only sees herself as a walking statistic. Change is really hard especially when it requires you to rethink an entire mindset. We all need help getting to the healthiest versions of ourselves, and my saving grace was my shady side soccer team. Soccer is such a beautiful sport of teamwork, sacrifice, reward and loss, total control and no control, balance. You play your position and trust that your teammates will play theirs with their whole heart for the good of the team. The team doesn't disown the center defender for a handball in the box, nor do they disown the center forward for piking their fifth shot. Yeah, we all grumble, and some might even make a petty comment, but at the end of the day, they're teammates and therefore family. This team showed me unconditional compassion and friendship, and without it, I don't know who I'd be. I'd still be nervous running in the neighborhood. I'd still be remembering myself lonely at that track meet. I'd still be in the state where I felt the need to feel every emotion and feeling of loss by myself. Where instead of seeing myself as being on the field with my closest friends, I saw myself alone, scared, and worried that I would let the team down. Countless moments of small kindnesses began to chip away at my own fear. Sadie and I doing our handshake before kickoff, juggling with Aaron at every possible moment, fulfilling a pregame ritual of telling Tessa to use her left foot, receiving postgame texts from Molly. I started feeling something I had never felt before, totally included. Then it developed more, coaches and teammates surprising me with a team party for my birthday, bus rides filled with singing while Nina held a massive speaker in my ear, writing and listening to letters and speeches of endearment to the teammates in their final season. Being a part of this team was like having living a highlight reel that I will forever cherish. They have fundamentally changed me and taught me how to be my best self. Running became something I learned to love. My fear of failure is slowly becoming pride and excitement. I remind myself that I don't have to be perfect in every moment because there's a Hannah Steffi or a Julie Staley or any one of the Whites or any one of the McMahons or a Molly Skorvac or an Aaron Canning or a Naveed or any girl on this team telling me that I am always good enough. During the last game of my high school soccer career, we lost to North Catholic in overtime. It was a scrappy, questionable goal that immediately ended what felt like an era of my life. I sat on the field wondering what I could have done to change the outcome. I receded into that state where I replayed every moment of the game, wondered where I could have scored, wondered what would have happened if I hadn't hit the post, wondered what would have happened if I hadn't hit it wide in that one shot, et cetera, et cetera. For a few moments, I replayed North Catholic's winning goal over and over in my head, but this time I turned those thoughts off. I stood up and I walked back to my team and there they were consoling each other but ready to give me a hug because they knew how much this loss would hurt me. They reminded me that it would be okay, the game was over and I couldn't change anything that happened and I tried to believe it, I really did. When tragedy struck at that meet in North Carolina, I didn't have the strength to get up or the will to change all I'd ever known since racing. I was alone and I didn't have anyone to hug me or understand why I felt the way I did. But then I got a call from Hannah Steffi telling me that she and Christina had watched my race. They told me how proud they were of me and how great I did. And I quickly tried to tell them, no, they shouldn't be proud. I didn't run strong. I was tired. But they didn't listen or care. They didn't care that I was five seconds off. They didn't care that I didn't win. They didn't care that I didn't run strong. My team, the SSA soccer team, picked me up even when they weren't in the race. They were all back in Pittsburgh. All of them saw me as me, Melissa, their teammate, and nothing could ever shake their unconditional love or support for me. Now when I step on the line to race, it's different. I still stand there by myself and I'm still nervous, but it's different. It's okay to be nervous, nervous is good, nervous means you care, and nervous means you're ready to go. But when I stand there on the line, I know that no matter what, I have my team around me. They're standing behind me, they're cheering me on in the third lap of the mile, and they're yelling at me when there's a girl 10 meters behind me. But most importantly, I know that if I finish the race and things don't go the way I wanted, and I fall down and can't stand, and I have to be sponged down and sit alone, I'm not actually alone. They're there, always, to pick me up. 
Even if my best isn't good enough for me, it'll always be good enough for them. Ironically, when I think about each of the girls I mentioned above, I don't think about their soccer stats. I don't think of Molly and immediately remember a game when she let a goal in. Instead, I think about how she has the amazing ability to listen to people and make them feel valuable and heard. When I think of Hannah, I don't think about her defensive skills. I think about how even though she graduated three years ago, she manages to keep in touch despite whatever busy schedule she might have. These girls are my heart and my soul and my means of sanity, and I will never play a game with these girls again, but I will hold on to everything they've taught me and all of the love and memories they have blessed me with. I hope that one day I'll be able to look at myself with the same unconditional love that they look at me with. If you are like me and are quick to judge yourself in the harshest possible way, I have one piece of advice for you. Surround yourself with a team, any team, any group of people that motivates you, holds you accountable, but most importantly, is there for you, no questions asked. When you find yourself with this team, let it change you, because I guarantee you, when you fully give to and receive from this team, it will change you forever. A true team will want you to be the best version of yourself. My team's faith in me was secure, and no race I ran would change that. Moving forward, I'm going to college where the stakes are even higher. I'll be running against faster competition and held to higher standards, but most difficult of all, I won't have my SSA soccer team there. It'll just be me and I'll have new teams and I do plan on looking to build new relationships to supplement the ones I'm passing on, but at least at first, I'm gonna be alone in a new world of height and pressure where I will be running to keep scholarship and pride. I'll say this now, it's scary. Yes, it's exciting and an amazing opportunity, but in a very terrifying way. I ask myself a lot of questions daily. Will I be successful? Will I gain a new family? Will I be able to handle the pressure? Will I be happy? And if I'm not happy, then what? But for me, I know that the most important thing is to remember what I've learned over the past four years. The lessons that my team has taught me won't go away, they won't disappear, and most importantly, neither will my team. I know that when I stand on the line for my first race in college, even though I'm out there in a new city by myself, I'm not alone. My team will be there behind me, holding my hand and telling me that it'll be okay. They'll be telling me that my best is always good enough for them, and they won't have to push me to be competitive because I can do that very well all by myself. They won't have to push me to be nervous and anxious because I'm all too familiar with that pre-race feeling. But they'll push me to believe in myself and remember that my identity doesn't rest on a single race. And maybe one day, when I hear it enough times, I'll start being able to look at myself in the same way they've looked at me for the past four years. To my team, I love you all with my whole heart. Thank you.